Well, good morning. My name is Billy Barrow, and I'm the County Extension Director in Bertie County, North Carolina. And today we'd like to talk a little bit about um, our peanut production and extension activities during 2019 uh, in our county. Alberti County is located in northeastern North Carolina in the heart of the traditional peanut belt. Uh, our peanut belt now has expanded from the, uh, the border of Virginia all the way down to the border of South Carolina and the total eastern part of our state. So um, we've got a much larger peanut production area now. But Bertie is located in what we call the traditional peanut belt. Berti County is approximately 450,000 acres of, of open land or, or total land area. About 93,000 acres of that was in cropland and our average farm size, about 450 acres. In 2018, we had 8,200 acres of peanuts planted. About 4,300 pounds per acre was our average yield. Now, in 2019, we focused our efforts on uh, field size trials, and this um, was something that we brought, we brought about. There's a, lo a lot of work being done at Peanut Belt Research Station, and they've been done in the past with uh, uh, smaller plot size trials, and, uh, and this is good information, but without growers, we'd like to see something on a larger scale. Uh, we use growers equipment and gathered yields uh, in that with their, with their combine equipment too. So first we want to look at a peanut variety trial. David Lake was our cooperator. And what brought this particular trial on was a, the movement of the peanut belt in the VC from uh, normal oleic peanuts to high oleic peanuts. With the advance, advance of the high oleic characteristic in the Sullivan, Emory, and the Wynn varieties, uh, there's an, there was an effort to move away from the non high oleic varieties, of which Bailey is um, in that category. And Bailey has been a strong performer for us, probably our, our highest yielding variety. And there's some concern that uh, switching to a newer, higher oleic variety would have more yield drag and be less productive. So we started this process in 2017 to look at those uh, issues. So if you look at the average there, you can see the Bailey at 5,736 pounds is a little stronger than the, uh, than the others, but uh, it's not a statistical difference. And if you look at 2019, we have our first, um, our first year with, um, with Bailey 2s, which is the Bailey variety with the high oleic characteristic um, inserted. And uh, it is performing as well as the Bailey. So uh, uh, we'll be having that in our program again this year. And growers are, or I think, will be very pleased with that. And we're gradually making that shift to all high weight varieties in the VC. Next, we looked at some vellum total uh, trials and its nematode suppression. And the impetus behind this was uh, we had a grower that was wondering if this particular chemical would be advantageous for him to use in his rotation in his crops. So we used uh, four fields, two that were sweet potatoes in the prior year and two that when Clary saves the prior year. Um, Joey normally has a strong rotation, probably about four years in all of his crops like that. Um, cotton, corn, and like would be the majority in that rotation, but we did, again, have the sweet potatoes and, um, and Clary Sage. So uh, again, field size trials, we replicated with strips in each location. Uh, nematode samples were pulled in May and September, and of course harvest was in late September and uh, early October. Looking at the populations at harvest time uh, with ring and root knot species, they were the two predominant species that we, we had uh, in those fields. Uh, there was no statistical difference between the effect of the vellum total or the check, in this case, which was the Admire Pro. Um, as far as yield was concerned, there was no statistical difference in the yield with either treatment. So we look at the cost of the com uh, a cost comparison on two materials, and if we could alleviate using this material, what kind of savings would we see? So with the vellum total at the 18 ounce rate, we were looking at almost $35 an acre, and at Meyer Pro at a 10 ounce rate, about $11 and a half an acre. So approximate savings of $23.25 to a grower if he did not need to, uh, to use the vellum total there, to, uh, if it would not work for him. So, as far as conclusions, there were no statistical difference in the fall nematode populations or in the yield. Um, didn't feel 100% in, in just saying it did not work. Uh, there was extremely, we had extremely dry weather in May, and we felt like that could have contributed to that with these materials being liquid material 
and not being able to be taken up by the plant because it was extremely dry. Part of that thought process was based on some uh, thrip population tests that were done by Dr. Richard Brandenburg in Lewiston at the Peanut Belt Research Station and also at the Rocky Mountain Research Station. And again, the thought process was there that uh, the extreme dry weather did not allow the, the, uh, the material to be taken up as well by the plant as it would in normal years where we had some rainfall. And um, so again, we kind of thought this could have been, had the same effect on the uh, uh, flor uh, flagiporam, on the nematode, nematode material, but um, well, we're not sure. So uh, we'll be looking at it again also in 2020. So as far as recommendations, um, again, the data is inconclusive, but previous studies suggest similar outcomes that um, that the material is, is not as active on the uh, nematodes as we as we may have thought it had been. So we feel like comfortable recommending to the grower they could save money by omitting this treatment, um, but we do recommend that they would take nematode populations or, and do some nematode sampling, and uh, and also have a, a good rotation that would include. 34 years of, of crop rotation, including cotton and or corn. So again, on the application cost comparison there, uh, what could we be saving? And we went on this earlier, about $23 an acre. If you, the grower was using a generic, then he may be able to add another two to $3 an acre savings, um, you know, by cutting out the uh, novellum total in his, um, in his um, planting operation. Okay, we also looked at some at apogee uh, with our cooperator was Clint Thompson, and we compared uh, no apogee sprays to up to three apogee sprays, and you can see the yields here from 44, 46 all the way to 48, 50, but there was not a statistical difference in there. Only statistical difference we saw was in the uh, amount of uh, total sample tool kernels um, from the zero apogee sprays was 68, and then everything else was higher than that, which was a statistical difference. Uh, it was a dollar value difference in there, and you can see that we went from $982 to $1,094 an acre. So we'll talk about that in just a second. Here's just a shot of the uh, the, the row there on the left is um, um, a row with no apogee, and then the one on the right was one with three sprays of apogee, and certainly it's like a stronger pond set there. As far as returns per acre, even though there was no statistical difference in yield, we want to look at um, could we cover the cost of the material. So with one spray, there was about a 204 pound yield increase. Uh, the value was about $46.84. Cost per acre about $24.50 with a net income of about $22.44. So, so there was an increase there almost, I think that was somewhere close to 90% return on the, uh, on the cost of the material. Uh, as far as the yield increase with the uh, two applications, we had 369 pounds and the net return per acre over the cost was $34.81. And as far as three applications, we did see it continue to go up to 404 pounds over the, the, uh, the no sprays, uh, but the cost also went up and our net per acre went down to just under $18 an acre. So again, our takeaway was a, there was no statistical difference in yields. However, uh, the application did recoup the material cost, material cost plus about 90%, was a 90% return where there was one application made and a 70% return where there were two applications. Again, our benefits there, we certainly had better road visibility and the pod retention was, was obvious. We looked at herbicide evaluation where we compared Zidua and Dual Magnum. Uh, our cooperator here was Ed Rawls, and our post emergence application was made on June 26th. And this was a side by side treatment um, Zidua every other 12 rows all the way across the field, uh, and then, and then the, the Dual Magnum was the other with our check in this particular situation. Both had storm at a pint and a half per acre in there. There was no difference in control. Uh, they did Appear to be a little more leaf burn with the Zidu application, but nothing that would affect yields. So here are a couple of pictures here. This was was um, this is a picture of the clean field here. Uh, you can see the cuckleburs, which was our main problem that were pretty well uh, burnt to a crisp there. 
And here's a picture of the dual magnum. Uh, pretty good, healthy looking plants. And here's some zidua. Uh, if you look closely, you can see some a little bit of burn on the leaf area there, but again, nothing that it didn't grow out of, and there was no no issue with uh, non anesthetic causing any kind of yield issues. Strip control was another issue uh, that we did look at. Um, this is the strip trial also, where we compared Thymat and AgLogic. Every other set of four rows uh, going across the field was uh, was the uh, Thymat, and then the AgLogic. Um, at the five pound rate for the Thymet and seven pound rate for the Agologic. Both gave excellent control, even though again, it was dry, uh, extremely dry in, in uh, early to mid May in 2019. Um, these granular materials uh, in the boot did do uh, a good product with thrip control. Uh, we did not have any trouble with phytotoxicity in this. So we were real pleased with both, with both, um, with both materials. Well, thank you for your interest in the peanut production activities in Bertie County, and we wish you a prosperous and, and uh, safe 2020.